Hey guys, it's Corey from Thought Soldiers. So, um, <clears throat> quite a break, huh? Quite a dark night of the soul. Um, yeah, huge, huge breakthroughs happened yesterday. Um, and that's why I wanted to make this video about, um, shadow, shadow and light stitching or, um, bringing the shadow to light and how we integrate the shadow aspect to the light aspect. So, excuse me, what happened was yesterday, um, you know, I was having this dark night, uh, moment that I've been having since I had since last Thursday after starting some, some shadow work and things were coming to the surface and what had happened was I reached this real, I, I made the video, I posted it, um, and thought it was just going to be this like really, like I, I was setting myself up for this really long, um, and crazy journey, um, that I realized I was inadvertently creating for myself. And someone had commented on the video saying, um, being the now moment and being in the now presence and, um, and knowing that, you know, the, that shadow aspect of the past life thing, past life, karma, whatever, um, it, it, it sits with me. It's a part of me. Um, but it has to, doesn't have to define the now moment and the now presence that I'm currently trying to live in, which is, which is, um, a state of mindfulness and, and a state of being in body and not in a state of fear or worry or so on and so forth. So what I did was I had, um, I did an Ascension coaching session with one of my peers I'm working with, who's just an awesome guy. I'm actually trying to talk him into him and I doing a podcast because when him and I talk, there's just these huge realizations and breakthroughs that I come up with. And he does too. We kind of hold space one and for one another to be able to, um, process and come out with these realizations. And we have some very interesting conversations that, you know, go on for hours. So Yesterday we were on the phone for three hours and through the processing and, and coaching him um, and just having an open discussion peer to peer. So it wasn't like a, it's not like a I'm here and he's here thing. We, we see each other eye to eye and we learn from one another. But so through talking to him, I did some, some shadow alchemy and broke through this dark night. And what had happened was, um, and, and, and now I'm going to get into the formula, a basic formula for shadow stitching or integrating the shadow in the light or how to alchemize a shadow aspect of us. So, um, first thing is, and I'll get into the story of how this all happened is to do some strength based, um, do some strength based, uh, learning about yourself, um, such as signifying your strengths, what you're good at, what you like about yourself, um, positive affirmations that, that, that you definitely know about yourself that are, um, you intuitively feel that are aspects of you that you like. Um, and this is, this is what happened was, so the first thing, of course, let me get back to this. First thing is to, to make a list and to really firmly believe those things and those aspects of yourself that you love about yourself and your journey right now and where your present moment is, where you're at on your journey, um, learning to really love yourself unconditionally. Um, so, so what happened was I was looking at this ancestral karma, which, um, I've got okay. Like for some reason, my oversoul just didn't want me to talk about it a whole lot. I think I had to heal it before I could actually discuss it. So, um, the shadow aspect that dawned on me was, um, I was a black magician in ancient Egypt. Um, and I did a lot of human sacrifices, a lot of blood rituals. I worked with cobras. Um, and I used a lot of very, very dark, dark magic to, um, to manipulate and to control and to suppress. So <clears throat> there was other aspects that popped up, like being burned alive in the Salem witch trials, also being a slave, being a part of the slave era. Um, those are the aspects of my, of my past lives that, that popped into um, my field recently. So as we were talking about this and we were discussing karma, so if this powerful, powerful, powerful magic that I was using to control and to suppress and to manipulate for personal and self gain, <clears throat> the karma, the balance, the polarity of that aspect is a life that I'm living today. And it helps me to really understand what I'm living today. And, and that living is, is that if I could use this, this very, very powerful, 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 potent magic to destroy and, and to do all these aspects, on the polarizing effect on, on this, on the, on the balancing of the life lesson that I'm choosing to live in this timeline, to be able to, to learn and to make peace with that life. 
is that I can use the same amount of power in light to selflessly create a better world for not only my children, but for other people to build in, to consciously create a, be a better society. And so that's, that's where I was like, whoa, this breakthrough moment, like, wait a minute. Yes, this stuff happened, but right now I'm, I'm working that out. Like there's no having to like sit down and process and work out that karma right now. I'm doing that. The process that I started this entire lifetime of helping another individual selflessly um, and to understand unconditional love and to, and to be able to spread that joy to people. I chose to sign up for this timeline. So what <clears throat> the, the other thing too is that <clears throat> I know that the only way to experience unconditional love is by going through a lot of pain and trauma. It's the way the law of attraction works. So the law of attraction, if I want something, the world is gonna bring in exactly what I don't want, a polarizing aspect of that. So then I learn what I do want, I heal, and I usher that in. So basically everything I've encountered in this life, this trauma that I faced as a child and, and things that I faced in, in my adult life and all these trials and tribulations were setting me up to show me for everything that I do want so I could consciously, I can use this power, this powerful magic of light to consciously create, to be able to utilize the, the energies in the universe for good um, selflessly and to give unconditionally and to love unconditionally to build a better world. And that was my breakthrough. Like, wait a minute, yeah, this is an aspect of me, but like right now I'm living out a very favorable timeline. Like if we're looking at, at timelines right now, if my soul contract said that I was gonna be doing black magic and all that manipulation and control, I know consciously because of who I am that if I did that, I would sign up for <laughs> eternal damnation or whatever is to come in that hell aspect to sit with what my soul did. So I incarnated on this timeline to be able to consciously create selflessly for other, not only for myself, but for other individuals. It's a selfishly selfless act. And that's when I had my breakthrough, okay? And I wanted, and going back to the gratitude list of like strengths that we find within ourselves was that I looked at all this past life stuff and I was sitting in that darkness uh, for too long, for too long. Um, and so I was sitting in that darkness and it was just like welling up over me. And this is the power of the ego and the shadow. The ego and the shadow, which, or the, the shadow ego, whatever you wanna call it. Those two aspects are so powerful that if we sit in it for too long and we believe, we consciously believe that this shadow aspect is what defines me as an individual, or this ego aspect is what defines me as an individual, will keep me stuck in that mess and in that chaos and I will thus create darkness for myself. And that was the realization was that I was sitting in this mud for way too long and I wasn't seeing the gold within. So that's when I had my breakthrough moment and I felt my heart chakra explode and this energy hit me and it created this treasure. It was literally the coal having so much friction and, and, and heat to be able to turn into a diamond. And um, I felt it within and I felt this energy surge through my body of this like level of understanding of the power that I have. But really, what really broke this through, and back to the strength-based thing, because I kind of went off on a tangent, was that I looked at the individual that I am today in this moment and in this timeline and in this now presence, this I am and this now presence. And I really love this person because what I started to do when I started to do the shadow work was clearing. I needed clarity on who I was, what my energetic imprint was in its true and raw form without the attachments of traumas, without the attachments of shadows and, and the spirits that worked with me to be able to, to understand these various things. That's why we do this shadow work to, to integrate is because we get down to that raw, that golden essence of what is within, which is our natural soul imprint. And I look at that imprint today as I start to do more of the shadow work and I really like that energetic imprint for what it is. I like me for who I am. I like um, a lot of aspects about me, um, not like I love them. And so I looked back at this past life stuff and I said, wait a minute, the wisdom that I hold today and the truth that I hold today is a direct result of all of my past lives culminating in my soul, all arriving at this single point in time to share this information. That was the breakthrough. That's how I alchemized it was that I realized that this very, very unsavory scenario that happened in a past life that I'm starting to remember is just one factor 
of the story of my soul imprint at this point in time and where I'm at in my journey. And when I looked at the strengths and I looked at what I had and all the wisdom I've acquired and all the great things about myself that I really love about myself as I started to clear the shadow and, and really start to illuminate certain aspects was that I finally came to terms with what it was and I realized that it created the beautiful being that I am today. And that's when it broke through and that's when I alchemized it and I released it and I was like, what? My heart blew wide open, felt this energy surging through my body and I was like, dang, like I'm a conscious creator. That's why we all, that's what we all do. When we rise to this consciousness and, and we start to create our rea reality, I can consciously create a dark night of the soul. I can, if I sit in that long enough and I, if I sit in that shadow, okay, for long enough and I sit in it alone for too long, I can consciously create a, either a new shadow or I can get it, that darker, that darkness will start to, to flood. And that's where frequency maintenance and things like that are very vital because what helped pull me out of this was I listened to some Tibetan bowl um, sound healing music and it shifted my vibration into another direction. I Palo Santo the house. I did some clearing where I set up these, um, they're like kind of transmutation water cups. I put Himalayan sea salt that I bless and I put it into a cup and then I bless the water, set intentions to transmute all, all negative energies um, across all timelines, all time space continuum and all past lives. Um, and I cleared out the house. So I cleared out the house I did frequency maintenance on myself by listening to the Tibetan bulls. I meditated. I pulled myself out of that darkness. And what happened was this huge realization that this darkness that I was sitting in and these attachments and this, this psychic attack or whatever had happened over the course of this weekend was my own creation. It was either an energetic, like, and I'm still, I don't know what it is. There's so many truths as to what it is, depending on my perspective. But like when we think of karma, like a ping pong ball, I shoot that karma out. It hits and bounces back. So maybe I sent out a thought form, you know, that finally that energy came back and returned to me. Could have been, it could have been a shadow aspect while I'm doing this shadow work. It came out and it attached myself to me. That doesn't matter the what or the why or the, that I was trying to do. Of, Where did this come from? What can I do to protect myself? Duh, 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 duh. The thing I can do to protect myself is by doing this shadow work and clearing those aspects of me, but consciously making a choice consciously making a choice that's where the healing comes in because i can either sit in that darkness or i can choose at that point in time that that dark aspect of me it is a part of me yes but i choose to not let it control or define the individual that i am today on my path and cut that cord and i integrate it i shed light on it and i realize that all these aspects of me the shadow the light the ego um you know the higher self things like that you know all these different all these different things, these factors that make up Corey, make up Corey in the now presence. And that now Corey is a very beautiful, nice, caring, loving individual. And that's what defines the now energy of this energetic imprint that I have is what I'm doing today. And so I realized that like, yeah, I'm unraveling this past life karma, but like, I don't need to sit in it, you know? And so I broke through last night, my heart chakra broke open and I was like, I'm back. And I got to, it was so nice being able to call my friends. I was like, guys, I'm back. And they're like, we can feel you. Yes, you're back. Like, we're glad you made it out. And I made it out pretty quick. Um, and, you know, I, I had a few friends that were like, we knew you were going to get out of it. Like, why do you, why do you set up this like, I'm going to go on a break? <laughs> well, um, the whole wanting to go on a break and, and things too. And I'm going to share this, this shadow aspect because I love sharing this level of vulnerability was I just wanted someone to reach out and say, it's going to be okay. That's what happened. Like I had people reach out that were like, hey man, like it's gonna be okay, you're gonna make it out of this. And I consciously chose to not sit in that shadow anymore. And it wasn't bypassing. It wasn't um, a form of like, oh, that shadow's there and I'm just not gonna look at it. No, like I, I was just sitting in it for too long and I consciously chose to not, to not let that be a defining factor of me. It's a part of me, but I don't let it define the now presence. The now presence is all of these aspects combined to create this being, which I'm cool with this being today and I love this being. So. You know, it's like spiritual with, with spiritual bypassing, which, you know, is something that is discussed a lot, which is basically, oh, here's a dark shadowy aspect or here's something that's unfavorable that I do not like. I'm going to shift my attention elsewhere. It's like sitting in a room alone and a monster walks into the room. You're aware the monster walks in. So you turn away and you stare, you, you go, you know what? Like, I'm just not going to look at the monster. The monster is not going to know I'm there. 
Well, the monster is there because the monster wants recognition. Okay, the monster wants recognition. And if you don't look at that monster, that monster is going to walk toward you. He's going to walk right up on your back and he's going to tap you on the shoulder and he's going to go, look at me. And you can turn around and look and yes, you may be in a reactive state, okay? So you may see this monster and you feel fear, you feel something, that's okay. Like, that's a natural response to a very scary situation. But the alchemy, the shadow alchemy, is embracing that monster and giving it a hug and going, I'm aware you're here and I love you unconditionally. From now on, after you do that, that monster no longer has power over you. It no longer will put you in a state of resistance because you embraced it unconditionally. And that's when you realize that that monster that walked in, it's just you. It's an aspect of you. It's a soul aspect of you that creates this being that you are today. And so I wanted to share this is because what happens is when you face that shadow and you embrace it with unconditional love, that's mastery. That's mastery. And tomorrow with the start of 222 and being a master day and this mastery thing, um, you know, that's, that's when, when we have those breakthroughs, that's when we get the gold, when we fight the boss, when the hero on the hero's journey is in the cave and he fights the boss and he wins, faces the boss. That's when he gets his treasure. And the treasure to me was this, this intuitive knowing that all of these soul aspects, whether they be dark, light, ego, so on and so forth, create this beautiful being that it is today. But then I got attuned to the Karuna Key, the next level of my Reiki today, and all the symbols that I got tuned to that I'm learning right now all deal with shadow alchemy, with healing karmic past life stuff, with healing traumas, sexual, sexual abuse as well, and emotional abuse protection for psychic attacks, all this stuff. And I realized like, oh, this is why I had to go through it. I had to go through it because I made a conscious decision that I wanted to go through this to add it into my healing modality so I could selflessly create for another, create a better world for another, pe uh, for us people, for, for my children or, or for the generations to come. I get to consciously create a better earth by helping to heal not only other individuals, but to heal Gaia through healing myself. And that was like the big, whoa. that was the breakthrough. And so I wanted to share this, guys, is that um, this is how I stitched my shadow side and I integrated it and I let it become a part of me. And it wasn't that I let it become a part of me. It's always been a part of me, but I looked at it and I chose to not let it, not give it power and to love that aspect of me unconditionally. Because all of this, all of this, is coming up to finding our better version of selves by ourselves, by loving unconditionally. And, you know, I see so much in this. The, there was, a, um, there was a, a, a talk I had today with the, the, my friend that I'm, with, uh, that I'm coaching or the peer that I'm working with. And um, he was talking about a channeled message, which I didn't read into it. I didn't listen to it. But it was about 5D and how we need to leave 3D realities behind. And if people aren't coming and they're not ascending with us, then we must leave them behind. And yes, it's good to set healthy boundaries um, when it comes to if you're extending your hand to another individual to help them on their ascension process and they're not reaching back, don't overextend. If they want to follow in your path, they'll follow in your footpath. But what he had taken it as was that we must leave all three deers behind. And that's not loving unconditionally. That's not what I see as the 5D template. The 5D template is loving everybody unconditionally. Even if you hate us, if you hate me, the mastery lies in loving you unconditionally because you're just, you're an aspect that makes up this beautiful world that we're living in today. Um, and so, you know, it, it was really neat to like see that when we are in the thick of the mud, we can't see the gold within. But if I change my perspective to that of a pig, that mud in front of me is pure gold. And like, I'm not saying change your perspective to a pig and that's how you get to 5D. But what I'm talking about is that our perspective is everything when it comes to the shadow work, the light work, and also how we view ourselves. Because I'll tell you what, if I were to have, at the time when I was in the thick of my mess, pull myself out consciously, not astral project, but see from another perspective of what was going on, I could see that everything was okay within me. And this shadow was something I was creating within myself to keep me down. I was creating this. I created all of that for myself. And that's when I realized that I'm a conscious creator. Um, like I knew it, but like as far as the, the knowledge 
turning into an application that I could apply to myself to turn into wisdom, like I consciously create. And, um, you know, another quick little story of this conscious creation was yesterday I'd hit a point where I said, you know what, um, I was in meditation and a bunch of friends showed up and they started crying and they're like, Corey, get out of this now because you're going to create your death. You're going to create your death right now by consciously creating this. So I stopped myself and I pulled myself out of it. Out of it. I had that breakthrough today. I'm crossing the street and I'm not looking. And right when I turn and look, I'm a foot away from getting hit by a speeding car. And it just dawned on me like, whoa, I'm a conscious creator. I'm constantly creating my reality. And I need to be careful with the shadow work because if I sit in it for too long and I start to get that, <clears throat> that old thought process of I don't want to live anymore, which was what was happening. My soul was getting tired. My mind was getting tired. And with all this shadow work, old Old emotions were arising, which a lot of it has to do with suicidal ideation and just walking out and giving up. I knew I was consciously creating a reality for myself that would be unfavorable to me and in my destined path. But I pulled myself out, whether it be divine intervention, I did it myself consciously, I signed up to be able to do that, whatever. I was a foot away from getting hit by a car today. I'm not lying about this. And, and, and what, what was interesting about all of that is like this big reality, guys, that when we're doing the shadow work and, and we're trying to, to integrate and to shed light on it and to stitch it through, um, <clears throat> the key important aspect for me, for me and my truth with my alchemy is learning to love myself unconditionally so when I step into the shadow, I can look at these aspects of me that I love unconditionally. And it's much easier to alchemize because that aspect is a part of me that will always be with me and I shed light on it and I shed truth on it, but it doesn't have to be the defining factor because there are so many facets of Corey as from past life, from this, this carnation, incarnation, um, the people around me and all of these different aspects are what create Corey as a whole. And this one shadow aspect, this one shadow aspect doesn't define who I am. It's everything together in culmination to create this form. And the more we clear and the more we remove this shadow, the more we get to our honest truth of our energetic imprint. And that's when we can have the discernment to know who we really are and to step into our power and to know we're very powerful creators. Um, we're powerful beings and we learn to love what we are and step into that and embrace that mastery and learn how to then integrate it in our day-to-day -day existence so we can build a better life for not only ourselves, but for everyone around us and our ancestors. It's like that guys. Um, Oh, I reached, so there's probably a split in this because I went over 22 minutes. I'm going to have to merge the videos and there's going to be a little break. But anyway, guys, much love and respect to everybody out there. Thank you for the kind words. Um, a, a few people reached out and it made me feel better. I also had a bunch of friends that came and were like, Corey, suck it up. Or they, they knew I had to go through it. I had to walk, step out of the shadow. Um, and it was great. So thank you. Once again, um, my Reiki, I'm going to actually... I'm going to start the Reiki back up next week. Um, so if we have, if there's any appointments that have been scheduled for this weekend, I'm going to cancel them to take the weekend to like learn the symbols more, um, to integrate them and to practice them on myself and also my friends that wanted to be guinea pigs for this new level of healing. Um, and then I'm going to open things up again um, on Monday. I'm going to keep my prices the same for a little while. Um, but I am going to bump it up because the deep, the level of healing that's happening now is really cool. I actually did a session today on a, on a beautiful soul who, um, I connected with dearly. Um, and the, the, the vibe of the entire session for the hour and what came through intuitively and what I could tell her was awesome. It was just so beautiful. And <clears throat> I'm glad to have made it out of this shadow, um, alive because I was, uh, consciously creating a very nasty, unfavorable condition for myself. Um, I want to thank everyone for the support. I was actually thinking about deleting the video because, you know, it's it was just one of those things. I was in a dark aspect and I was kind of calling out for help. Um, but I wanted to share this breakthrough with people um, because it, it's very important. And, and this is where I also say don't leave before the miracle happens because right when you feel like you're on the verge of giving up, that's when you break through. And that's the way things happened yesterday. I was just on the verge of stepping down and saying, saying I'm done with this ascension process. I'm done with this darkness. I'm done with it all. And I stepped out, I stepped aside and I stepped up to my service of being able to help another individual and to do light work with a peer that I'm, that I'm talking to. 
and the the role was split he saved my life and that's a beautiful beautiful aspect of these peer-to-peer -peer connections is you know you may be coming in with the intention to to heal others but you never know when that person that you are helping to heal can heal you and that's the power behind this of this light work so i want to thank everyone for for being here for supporting me um i'm back that was the the world's longest break of like a whole maybe 24 hours a little bit more um so anyways <clears throat> click subscribe if you haven't um much appreciated it's currently at like 666 subscribers which is kind of an auspicious sign so i'm not trying to look at it that way especially with the shadow work but uh definitely trying to to uh balance out my home life with the amount of subscribers i'm seeing um and that's a key thing is balance too so um if you want to reach out cory mclight 33 at gmail.com um i'm gonna have my link posted for um for my appointments and we'll start doing appointments <coughs> Sorry, I'm really dehydrated. My throat chakra is closing up. Probably these activations. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, I'm going to have my appointments up on, on for starting on Monday again. Going to open that up. I'm actually thinking about just stopping the 30, the free 30-minute sessions because with time and, and the, the level of healing that I'm offering now, I um, can no longer really afford it. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to do Ascension Coaching too, reach out to me because um, I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a few guys right now. Um, and I love, I love working, I love working with my masculines and, and having these big breakthroughs with one another and, uh, being able to hold space to, to process and to, to find our way together. You know, it's not only being a way shower, but they, they will show the way too through, through their experience. So that's all I got guys. Much love and respect to everybody out there in the Webiverse and, uh, I will see you on the other side. Namaste.